Star Wars has always been an inspiration. I want to walk a mile in the shoes of the ILM model maker. You can't, and that world doesn't exist anymore, but you can get kind of close. When I was really Wars. little, Empire Strikes Back. I, remember I will say that Star Wars is my first Yeah, I saw the X-Wings flying. Everyone around. has a Star Wars story. I'm Jordan Hembro, and I'm meeting Star Wars fans who've been inspired and changed by the galaxy far, far away. Today, I'm in Baltimore, Maryland, visiting Jason. It was the behind-the-scenes magic of Star Wars that captured his imagination. Now he makes models as detailed and amazing as the real thing. Jason? Jordan, hey. hey how are you? Good, how are you doing? Good. Come on in. Thanks. This is Jason's Star Wars story. Star Wars connects my entire generation. Yeah. I could walk up to any other 46-year-old person uh, and say, Boba Fett, and they'd be like, oh, hell yeah. Put Captain Solo in the cargo hold. We all have this weird shared collective knowledge that I find really kind of fascinating and cool. In 77, I was four, so it really hit me more in 78. I remember just being blown away. And what sealed the deal was going to the local toy store and my mother saying, you can have the land speeder and four figures. And then, you know, it's all over from there. How'd your parents like the movie? They loved it. Whenever I would get a gift from a relative, they give you just like an action figure. And if it was somebody I already had, my dad would take it to the toy store and swap it out for a stormtrooper. Cause he's like, you need an army. And my mom was artistic. So she would get me like the model kit. That was my first exposure to model making was the Millennium Falcon. And we built it as a family. My mother knew how to do a little bit of weathering. She showed me, you know, you slop it on and then you wipe it off. But it made a thing that didn't exist. Right. Until you made it. With that model, it lit up, and it was more detailed than the Kenner toy, which appealed to me. So, after you made this great Millennium Falcon with your parents, a true family affair, you got a book then, right? Kind of changed your life as well. I did, yes. It is Star Wars, the making of the movie. It took you through how they actually would make a film, and then there were photos in it. Oh, they were the models. Yeah, and it just apparently stuck with me for the rest of my life. So did seeing the book inspire you to do the models? In a very real way, yes. And I've talked to other people who had that book, and it did the same thing for them. Really? It showed you that there was a way to make something from nothing that could become a different world and that was so appealing and fascinating to me. I share your passion with, with models and model kits because I did a lot of model kit building when I was younger too. Your models, they're essentially replicas of the models that were used in the movies. Their the detail yeah. is incredible. How is what you do different than us? I will make a model from nothing. I will make it from scratch. I think about how the original was built and okay. whether that process is the process I should follow and build something out of nothing. The foundation is going to be the main form, and a lot of the times that will be acrylic because I have a laser cutter and it's very easy to draft pieces that will then fit together. And then the next step would be you take disparate parts from model kits and reassemble them onto the base that all of those kit parts are going to be glued to. And you put them down in such a way that they look functional. So if you have a little piece here, you run a little bit of wire or something to another piece to infer that maybe this is feeding this power or this is a vent or whatever. And there's a definite art to it. So this is the actual workshop? Yeah. This is where all the magic happens. Yeah, yeah, in the basement. What is this thing? This is the Tabana gas mine, which only really existed as a Ralph Macquarie painting. And I just really like the idea of building a little baby world. So I designed all these little ships, printed them, painted them, and I made little channels for the wiring for the outer rim. Things are held on with magnets. That's incredible. It's almost meditative, this kind of stuff. You just get lost in the details. Oh, and this is a metal blockade runner. This is a replica of the first ship you see in the movie. And I have a finished one of this in my uh, TV room. Do you really? Yeah. Oh, is that the model room? Yeah, in the model room. Yeah. Can you yeah. show me that? Absolutely. Oh, right. wow, <laughs> this is incredible. Yeah. So you built all of these. I did. This looks a lot like what you showed me downstairs earlier. Yeah, yeah, this is the finished version. We've put all the kit parts on it now and I've painted it. This is all original parts. They put together this one just for that one classic shot. Right. And because they knew they only needed it for that one angle, it never got really detailed on the non-filming side. Oh, look so at that. So they just left it blank because why, why bother? Tell me about this. That's a, that's a sand crawler. This is the sand crawler. This is the Ralph Macquarie painting version of the sand crawler. This was one of the first things I did with 3D for just the main form and then everything else is scratch built. I'm really happy with the bottom. There's just a ton of detail that never gets seen. Wow, look so at that's that. that's really fun. 
That's fantastic. And it even lights up there. You got the lights going oh, on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Adds a little bit of depth. And the back looks pretty cool too. That's fantastic. This is the Death Star turret. This is a replica of what ILM did from this line up. But since they blueprinted it, I thought, well, let's just build the whole thing. So I haven't done the bottom yet. The goal of this was to use all the original types. This is about four feet high, if not higher. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little ridiculous. I have a little remote. Yeah. And you can make it. Oh! Oh, and it lights up and everything. What do you do now for a living? I'm a graphic artist and I just make stuff. So even now, art, your whole life. Whole life. You're an artistic yeah. guy. Yeah. Why not painting? Why not drawing? Like, why'd you choose model making? Star Wars has been a motivating factor. It's, it's always been an inspiration. It's a conduit to, you know, that simpler, happier time when you're a child. It's something that's binding me socially to people that keeps us going. I've painted and I've drawn, but the model making again taps into that weird little magic, that shared experience that we all have. And there's that little voice in the back of my head that's been there my whole life. It's like, I wanna walk a mile in the shoes of the ILM model maker. You can't, and that world doesn't exist anymore, but you can get kinda close. <laughs>